Anyway, how's everyone doing? I heard um, you guys are enjoying the course now because you're finally understanding. <laughs> I should get a nice cup of coffee. I got two cups of tea already. It's not about coffee. It's that I've been talking for so long. And every time on Wednesday after my tutorials, I'm just sitting quietly <laughs> in my room and not talking to anyone. Hi, your caffeine. I feel like you get addicted to it in some way because sometimes uh, when I keep drinking coffee every day and um, I will, if I stop one day, I feel extremely tired. And if I stop drinking coffee for like a month, even if I have no coffee, I don't feel tired. So it's kind of, <laughs> kind of bad. So I'm trying to drink less, but I like the taste. What's your favorite coffee? I'm a big fan of cappuccino. Ice black coffee. I, I really like cappuccino with whipped cream on top, my favorite. And then water. <laughs> um, and I really like iced americano. That's another one that I really like. You're more into water and tea. I drink tea as well. Milk tea, tea latte. I really like tea latte. Big fan of tea latte. And I really like orange juice. <laughs> orange juice is so good. Orange juice or apple juice? I, I don't drink apple juice because I don't like apple. I really don't like apple. It's like one of the fruit I really don't like. I don't eat apples. I don't eat anything apple related. <laughs> I, I don't eat anything apple related. I don't know. I just don't like it. <laughs> Not even apple pie. I'm not a big fan of pie either. It's like, I know people get hurt. I, I don't like pizza either. You'll say no way again, I know. I don't like pizza. Uh, actually, everyone in my family, except for my sister, we all don't like pizza. My sister is the only one in my whole family who likes pizza. Um, <laughs> so yeah, do you like pineapple on pizza? I think that's a um, popular question. Can you, <laughs> can you stand pineapple on pizza? So for me, you know, um, a lot of time we have pizza party in school, you know, either in math club or like marking party or something. Um, we always order pizza and I am not a big fan of pizza. So I only eat the pineapple and mushrooms on pizza. Because th there are people who doesn't eat pineapple on pizza or the mushroom on pizza. So I eat those and they eat the pizza. Mushroom pizza? <laughs> pineapple on pizza is wrong. <laughs> Opinions can be wrong. That's true. Cannot be wrong. You cannot say people are wrong. Just say, I don't like it. I think you need to actually. I like it. I mean, 
I don't like pizza in general, so I don't really mind. Not my go-to topping. If I have to eat pizza, then I would order uh, the one with a Ferdo sauce with mushroom, chicken, and jalapeno on top. Yep. <laughs> but nothing else. I don't like anything else on top of my pizza. We should have a pizza gathering. When everything go back to in person, the math club would have free pizza. So um, that's actually one of the reason a lot of people go to math club <laughs> just to eat the free pizza. Yeah, so math club would have free pizza. Um, and, and I think every Wednesday, you can get free breakfast, which you don't, you guys don't have that anymore. I mean, I mean, since it's online, but before when it was in person, every Wednesday morning, you can get free breakfast from the student center. It's still there. Oh, okay. Didn't know. Cool. Okay. We talked a lot about food. Let's talk about 102. So hopefully this part is not bad for you, but you do need to be careful because it's really easy to make mistakes. Mm. Anyway, yeah, that's all I want to say. So hopefully now you, you know those connectives. So we have and looks like this. So I hope this reminds you of intersection symbol, okay? And or it looks like union and they only mean similar things. Negation P, not P, it means the opposite of P. Uh, implication if P then Q, you've seen it a lot already. Equivalence, well, it's also called biconditional P then only if Q. You've seen this a lot already. And I want to emphasize this is the same as P implies Q and Q implies P. Okay, and now we have quantifiers. We have two quantifiers. One is a universal, the second one exponential. So if we have this symbol, this means for all or for any or every. And if we have this symbol, be careful, it's not E. It's not this, okay? It's this. Um, this means there exists or for some or there is. Um, make sure your symbols are correct. Otherwise, you might or might not lose mark. Depends on who's marking it. I'm not marking this, so I don't know. Now, let's look at example one. So this is from your textbook. It's the exercise 3.7.2. Um, it asks you to write the meaning in English. I'm not gonna do that. I'll just say it in English. Decide whether it's true or false, we'll do that. Explain your decision briefly, we'll do that, but I'm not gonna write anything down. I'll just talk, okay? Because we wanna do as many questions as we can. So the first one is, for all x and for all y, we have x is greater than or equal to y. Is this true or false? False, okay, why is it false? Can someone give me a counter example? Yes, exactly. So you pick an x, for example, x equals to one, y equals to two, then x is not greater than or equal to y, so it's false. Number two, there exists x and there exists y such that y is greater, such that x is greater than or equal to y. Is this true or false? Okay, I'll give you more time to think. True, why is it true? It is true, why is it true? Example? Yep, 
x equals to 1, y equals to 0. Exactly. OK, um, number three. OK, listen carefully. Listen carefully, number three, because this is where people make mistakes. OK, listen carefully. Number three says there exists x such that for all y, we have x is greater than or equal to y. Again, repeat, there exists x such that for all y, we have x is greater than or equal to y. True or false? There exists x for all y, we have x is greater than or equal to y. This is false, okay? Why? Because there is no largest number. This is saying you have a fixed number x such that this x is greater than or equal to all the other numbers, but we do not have the largest number, okay? So it's false. This is a common mistake. That's why I'm taking it up, okay? You need to know three and four are different. Yes, so for any y, so if you choose x equals to one, then you are saying all the other real numbers are less than or equal to one. Yes, exactly. Okay, so three is false. Four, okay, again, listen carefully. Four is saying that for all x, there exists y such that x is greater than or equal to y. Again, repeat, for all x, there exists y such that x is greater than or equal to y. Okay, tell me what you think in the chat. For all x, so for every x you have, we have a corresponding y such that x is greater than or equal to y. True or false? It is true, okay? What does this one mean? This one means, there is always a smaller number y than x. So for any x you pick, there is always a number that's smaller than that. So you can just pick y yeah. equals to x minus one. Okay, so for any x you have, you can pick y equals to x minus one, which is always less than or equal to x. Yes, the order of quantifiers really matters. That is why we are taking it up, okay? This is a common mistake. That's why we're doing this, because I know you'll make the mistake. Number five, again, listen carefully. For all x, there exists y such that x squared plus y squared equals to one. For all x, there exists y such that x squared plus y squared equals to one. True or false? False, why is it false? Exactly, if x equals to 10, then there is no such y. Okay, because y squared has to be greater than or equal to zero, x squared will be 100, you need minus 99 to get one, but y squared is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so it's false. Now look at the sixth one. It's easy to tell if it's true or false, but my question is, what is the difference between five and six, okay? What is the difference between five and six? Okay, I'm gonna repeat what I, <clears throat> I'm gonna 
say number six in English. So this means there exist X such that for all Y, X squared plus Y squared equals to one. There exists X such that for all Y, X squared plus Y squared equals to one. What's the difference between five and six? It is false, yes. What is the difference between five and six? Yes, yes, yes exactly. Mark, you are on the right track. For number six, this X is a fixed number. However, for number five, this Y can change with your X, okay? So Y can change with your X. So this is saying, well, for every X you have, there is a corresponding Y, but this one is you fixed one X and they are saying, oh, this X, can let my x squared plus y squared equals to one, no matter what your y is. That's the difference, okay? <clears throat> so um, in my last tutorial, someone asked, what if we change this to for all x, there exists y, such that um, x squared minus y squared equals to zero. Is this true or false? Okay, this is true. Y, you can just pick Y equals to X, right? If you pick Y equals to X, then you always have this. And someone asked, what if we change this to there exist? Then it will be true as well, okay? So you would have a number X and the number Y such that X squared plus Y squared equals to one. So that will be true as well. This is the first example. Hopefully this example made you understand that the quantifier, the order of the quantifier matters a lot. Okay, the order of the quantifiers, they do matter, it matters a lot. Now let's look at the truth tables. Um, hopefully you know them by heart already. Um, those questions can be really fun. In my last tutorial, people actually enjoyed the question. Uh, <laughs> very rare to see one or two because when people mention one or two it's just pain but people actually enjoyed the questions so hopefully you guys can enjoy as well logically equivalence we say two statements p and q are logically equivalent if they always have the same truth value so to show two set two statements are logically equivalent, what do we do? What do we do? Truth tables, exactly, truth tables. So to prove two statements are logically equivalent, you draw the truth tables. I hope you can enjoy the questions too. I really like the question I prepared. Not this one, the next one. Okay, so let's do an example on this. Show the following statements are logically equivalent by constructing the truth table. So I'll write, I'll give you the structure and I want you to fill it out. But don't do anything yet. Let me give you the basic structure.
I'm sure I'll play that at the end. So we have this huge truth table. And again, we have true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now I want you to annotate on the screen and tell me what is my truth table look like. What does it mean to be vacuously true? Okay, vacuously true means this means when you have P implies Q and P is false. That's called vacuously true. Are the three dash line the same as equal sign? No, this means equivalent. So they are logically equivalent, but they are not actually the same thing. If they are the same thing, then you use an equal sign, but this means equivalent. Okay, let's look at what you guys get. So uh, <laughs> the first one is true, false, true, true. That is correct. The second one is true, false, true, true as well. That is correct. Uh, someone put the check mark there already. Okay, cool. <laughs> the second part, uh, P and Q, we have true, false, false, false. That's correct. Not P and not Q is false, 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 true. That is correct as well. And then the last two columns are true, false, false, true. That's correct. Okay, so everything is correct. Great, good job, good job. Um, any question? Let's see. So if a question says is P implies Q false or true and explain and P is false. Oh, I do not understand what you're saying here. Can I say that it is false due to the truth table or do I have to say it's vacuously true? Equal means you're actually the same thing. Logical equivalence is just mean they have the same truth value but they are not really the same statement. Does that make sense? They're not really the same statement. They, they just have the same truth value. They're logically equivalent. I see one hand raised up. Uh, just unmute yourself. Uh, I'll just say that my question in, in, like, in my voice, because I think it'll be a bit easier to understand. So I'm saying like if, um, if a question defines what P and Q is and asks, if P implies Q is false or true, and it says explain. And when I kind of like think about it, uh, <clears throat> I figure out that P will always be false. Then the you can say, will... because it's false, uh, because P is false, the whole statement is vacuously true. So, so that you don't need part, right? Anymore. So that part where, where you give your conclusion, if it's vacuously true. So if I say, uh, as left-hand side, uh, it's false, so it would be false. Can I say it's false, or will I lose more? It's what do you mean as the left hand side is false? Like if P is false, when, uh -huh. when P is false, you said that uh, as P is false, so uh, it becomes vacuously true. Mm -hmm. So uh, when when I do a question, the same question, I said that as P is false, then the statement is false, not vacuously true. 
well, then you are wrong because the statement is true. Vacuously true is true. <laughs> it's not false. But like, be, like the, the implies truth table says that it's false. No, uh, the implies wait. truth table, is, it says it's true. Oh, yeah, false then no, sorry. Oh, anything yeah. is true. Okay, so uh, sorry, if, if I say it's true, not vacuously true. You should say it's vacuously true because that explains why it's true. All right, okay. Um, let's see, other question. So in problem set, can we just show the truth table like this or do we have to explain the question? You should say, uh, you should say the statements are logically equivalent. So you should say the statements are logically equivalent because you have the, or you can say, uh, I'll just say it directly. So you should say uh, the last columns have the same truth value, which means the two statements are logically equivalent. So you should have a conclusion statement to say why. Uh, and similarly for here, you should say, oh, the last columns have the same truth value. That is why they are logically equivalent. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay, so it seems like you're answering each other's questions, so I'll move on. Number three is a question I said people enjoyed doing this. Uh, hopefully you guys can enjoy it as well. It's actually really fun. I really like this question. That's why we're doing it. Uh, <laughs> so PQR are three statements. If this whole thing is a false statement, what must be the truth value of PQ and R? So what I'm gonna do is I would, we will do A together and I'll let you do B, okay? We'll do A together, it's actually fun. Please, it's fun. Okay, so we know, we know P or Q implies negation R, is false. What does this mean? This means P or another statement is false. When do we have to P and an or another statement to be false? What does this tell us? Uh, both statements are false. Yes. So since only false, only false or false. would give us false. We know that we know P must be false. And Q implies negative R must be false. So now we know P is false. So also we know this implies this must be false. So what does this tell us about Q and not R? When do we have, when do we have uh, something plus other thing be false? True implies false, exactly. So also, only true implies false will be false. That means Q and negation R must be, oh, sorry. That means Q must be true. And negation R must be false. So we know Q is true. And since negation of R is false, we know R must be true. Okay, so this is a fun question to do. Um, I explained it a bit. Now I'll leave B for you. I'll give you some time to think about it. 
and I want you to tell me what is your answer. Try part B. Do it now. Isn't this fun? I really like this. <clears throat> I am a big fan of those type of questions. It's so much fun. Is there a quiz on truth tables or just a meter? Just a meter. The next quiz will move on to the next chapter and next, next chapter. So I think the next quiz will be on induction and probably Injective, subjective, bijective. Play with part B and let me know what you got. I'm so hungry. Ah, so hungry. I think every Wednesday when I reach now, I'm so hungry. I'm starving. Oh, let's quickly finish this so I can eat something. So what do I think? PQRS, what are the truth value of them? So let's see. P Q R S. What is P? P is true, that's correct. Q is true, that is also correct. R is false, that's correct. And S must be false as well, that's correct. Okay, great, you're doing good. The, the full solution I'll write it down and upload it on Quarkus, but now we'll just move on, okay? It's pretty straightforward and pretty fun to play with, <laughs> but we'll move on from the fun part. Hopefully you can enjoy the next part as well. Proposition 3.4.2. This is basically telling you what's the negation of some thing you've seen before. So the negation of P and Q is negation of P or negation of Q. This and this, the first two are called the Morgan's law of for logic. Okay, we've been telling you do not use this, do not use this. Now you can finally use it. Uh, C is telling you the negation of P implies Q is the same as P and not Q. D, P even only if Q is P implies Q and Q implies P. And last one is a control. The last one is a control positive. So, P implies Q is the same as negation Q implies negation P. 
this is a contrapositive of p implies q. Uh, they have the same truth value because they are logical equivalents, which we'll talk about next week when we move on to proof techniques. And now we have negation of quantifiers. So you should know that negation of for all is there exists and the negation of there exists is for all. Pretty simple stuff. Now let's move on to example four. So I need, what was the De Morgan's law for sets? So it's, it's the complement one for sets. It's A intercept, B complement is A complement, union B complement. A union B complement is A complement intercept B complement. Yeah, so this is a De Morgan's law for sets. Anyway, I want five of you to write down your answer for this question. Uh, first come, first serve. When someone starts to write down for one question and you have you cannot pick the same one anymore. Okay, and go. Annotate down the screen. Write down the negation and tell me if the original statement is true or false. What about the other people? Number four, you need to write the negation as well. Or so, negation, where is your negation? Um, or so, you should tell me which one are you saying is true or false. So tell me if it's P is true or negation is true. Give you some time to think about it. And the first one you need to, you also need to, do you know you can erase it? You don't have to cross it out. <laughs> There is an eraser that you can use. That's similarly here, can you erase it? Don't need to cross it out. The first one, is it true or false? Is P true or false? And the third one, do we look at the green one or the red one? I'm kind of confused. <laughs> or did the same person wrote both green and red? 
Oh. Okay, let's look at the first one first, since P is true, okay, cool. Oh, uh, let's look at the first one. So um, we have negation of P is for all Y in real number, that's correct. There exists X in real number, that is correct. Such that this is not equal, that's correct as well. And is P true or false? You said it's true, that's correct, but why is it true? Which Y are we picking? P is true, zero, exactly. So we let y equals to zero. Okay, done. Done. This is the same as this. Okay, so one, that's, that's the first one. Uh, let's look at the second one. You only need to pick one y. As long as you can find one Y, then you're down because it says there exists Y. So we, we found one Y that works. So that's that's all you need to do. Okay. Um, number two. Oh, someone's already doing check mark for me. <laughs> okay, let's see. For all axes, there exists X in this, that's correct. And then we have P in plus Q, so the negation is P and not Q, that is correct. Where did my, where, where, where the check mark? Okay, cool, nice. So, uh, true, are you saying P is true or negation P is true? Negation P is true? Are you sure? <laughs> what is your X done if negation P is true? Which X would give you um, X squared is less than one? It's integer square is less than one and X is not zero. X has to be integer. X is integer. So what is true? Is negation true or P or, or P original true? x equals to two, then the square is not less than one. Minus two? Well, the square is still not less than one. So p is true, not negation of p is true. p is true because um, when x is, x, so, so x squared, we know x squared is between those two. And when it's, when it's uh, integer, then x can only be zero. Okay. So p is true. Number three, let's look at number three. Um, we have negation of p. Where is my annotation? Negation of P. So there exists X in real number such that this is P plus Q again. So you should write P and not Q. So P is uh, that's correct and not Q. So uh, here in between, do I, is it or or and? Whoever wrote this, is it or or and? If the negation is true, then the original is false. If the negation is false, then the original is true because we have the opposite truth value, Karina. Um, it should be or, yeah, that's correct. So let me read, oops, it should be or. Oh, okay, this is so hard to use. Okay, should be or in between because, well, here is and. This is end. This is saying 
x squared minus one is less is greater than or equal to negative one and smaller than or equal to nine. So this is correct now. Uh, and what do we think? So so the person said P is true. Is P true? Do we agree P is true? P is true, okay, P is true. So my question is, what does this tell you? What are my X value here? What does this tell us about X? X would be what? Minus one, zero, one two, three, exactly. Okay, so when x is those number, you take the square and minus one, Does is this less than or equal to nine? Yes. And is this greater than or equal to negative one? Yes. So this p is true. Okay, uh, that's number three. Let's look at, oh, uh, yeah. Question? Uh, I just had a quick question. So could we also think about is like, it's the conditions like for all X and R. Um, so like there's only this a specific- This is just telling number. you your X is a real number. This is just telling you for all X in real number. Um, it's just telling you this X here are real number. But since the restriction here tells you x is an integer, so that means every x will be integer, which is also in real number, so it does not affect our solution. The quantifier here does not affect our solution. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, number four, let's see, where is my stamp? Okay, so the negation is there exists x in integer, for all y integer, x, y equals to, equals to zero? Or does not equal to zero? Okay, here should be x, y does not equal to zero and y is not zero. Oh, y is zero, sorry, y is zero. So it should be x, y does that equal to zero and y equals to zero. Okay, so this will be the correct negation. Um, and oh, what do we think? So you said r is true. Is r true or false, guys? Is r true or false? R is true, that is correct. Why is it true? Let's look at the, oh. this is true, uh, this is correct. Uh, let Y be not zero and X be zero. Oh, you cannot fix your X because X is for all, um, all x in integer, so x could be any integer. So you can only fix your y. So so for all x in integer, there exists. So that means, well, if your y can be either zero or non-zero, if x is, if x is zero, then x, y equal to zero. If x is now zero, pick y does not equal to zero, then you have y does not equal to zero. So r is true. Does that make sense? Again, I'll repeat. If x is not zero, okay, no, no, no. If x is zero, then x, y equals to zero, no matter which y you pick. If x is not zero, you can have y, then you pick y and does not equal to zero. 
So you will have the second one. So it's either the product of them is zero or y is not zero. Or if that confuses you, you can look at the negation. So look at the negation. If that confuses you, look at the negation. The negation is saying, so this part, this part is saying there exists x integer for all y integer such that x, y is not zero, but y equals to zero. Can you have y equal to zero, but x, y does not equal to zero? Is that possible? No. Okay, so that means your negation is definitely false. So that means your original is true. Does that make sense? Yeah, so sometimes you'll see that uh, checking the negation will be easier than checking the original statement. So that's a technique you can use. Sometimes one is easier than the other. So you should definitely try. So if the original statement is confusing you, then you try the negation. Um, and uh, that's, that's number four. Let's look at number five. Oh, okay. Number five, uh, R, does there exist change to four or four change to there exist and uh, X over Y is not Z or X equals to zero. False, they said the original is false. Is that what you mean? The original is false? Yes, um, the original is false. Yeah, 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 that's correct. This is correct. Why is it false? Why is it false? Do we have a fixed x such that no matter what your y is as the integer, no matter what your y is, your uh, your first of all x is not zero and x over y is always integer. Do we have such x? No, you don't. The only x that can make your x over y equals to integer is zero. And once you remove the zero option, you don't have such things because you don't have um, an x that's that's a multiple of any natural number. But it's for all y in natural number. So y can be any natural number. Does that make sense? You cannot fix y exactly because y is anything. So this is this is basically because zero is the only number that's a multiple of any natural number. Once you remove it, then, then you don't have it anymore. Or if that doesn't make sense, you can check the negation. The negation says for all x in integer, there exists y in natural number such that x equals to zero or x over y is not integer. So this you can easily find find your solution so for all x so what what would we make y to be such that it's not it's not integer you can make y equals to x plus one right so oh it has to be it has to be natural number well you can make y equals to the absolute value of x plus one <laughs> so so it's not an integer or, uh, or x equals to zero, something like that, okay? So um, if the original statement is not clear, you can try the negation. Um, sometimes it's much easier. But yeah, anyway, um, any question? Question? The whole point of this question is telling you sometimes Deciding if the negation is true or false, it's easier to be honest. Let's let's so take away from this question. <laughs> and also another takeaway is uh you you, you can see some common mistakes, such as um here 
and here. Those are some common mistakes. Um, try not to make the same mistakes as the other people. But do we have any question? If not, I'm gonna go eat. I'm starving. Easier it's easier to prove the same one with this ex there exists. Yeah, because you can just find it directly. Definitely. Yeah, basically, um, if the original simon is really hard, you cannot you cannot determine if it's true or false. Try to write the negation, uh, because you know the original simon and negation they always have the opposite truth value. So once you figure one out, you automatically have the other one. So that's that's something you can try during the test. Uh, just don't get stuck there forever. Try something um you can think of. Anyway, uh, that is the end of the tutorial. Next week, we will do proof strategies, which are direct proof, contrapositive, and contradiction. And next week, you will have your test as well. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Okay, go away. Bye.